Thanks for joining me for example 5.3.2. Here we're told that S is a solid in the first octant, bounded by the planes x plus y plus z equals 2, and x plus y minus z equals 0. We're asked to sketch S on a set of axes in R3, and then we're going to use proposition 5.3.2 to find the volume of S. So let's give ourselves some axes first. There's an x, a y, and a z axis in R3. And the first plane we're going to sketch by looking at intercepts. So if y and z are 0, we get x is 2. So the point 2, 0, 0 is the x-intercept. And that's going to be the same for the y-intercept and the z-intercept. So all of these are going to be at 2. Now, that is only one of the two planes. And so we can see that plane coming down and bounding a tetrahedron in the first octant. So let's see what the other plane looks like. x plus y plus uh, minus z equals 0. If we try the same intercept method, we're going to see that only the origin is the intercept of that plane. So we're going to do uh, projections onto the coordinate planes instead. And if we look at the plane x equals 0, that's the y, z plane, we're going to have that y minus z equals 0, or y is equal to z. So the line y equals z comes up in the yz plane right there. If we do the same thing in the xz plane, so this is when y is equal to 0, we're going to have x is equal to z, and that is the plane, right, or the line right there. So that plane is coming up. Again, we only need the part in the first octant, and it's going to intersect the first plane right like that. So let's draw this a little bit more cleanly without the parts of the planes that we do not need. And so the first plane starts at z is equal to 2 and comes down to, so let's get this line up correctly and the plane z x plus y plus z comes down and they intersect right along here, making kind of like a clamshell, but a triangular clamshell. So the first comes down looking like this, and the second comes up looking like that. And there's our solid bounded by the uh, coordinate planes. And above, you'll notice, if you were to drop a perpendicular down here, there is a region D in the xy plane that our graph, our solid, is over. And so that is going to be our region of integration in part B. So part B says use proposition 5.3.2 to find s. Well, to do that, we're going to need to first of all figure out what this region d is. So let's go back and put some uh, numbers on the, the region. So this is our plane here. This is the plane in red. That's the plane that uh, z plus y plus x is equal to 2. Not sure why I wrote it backwards, but there it is. And if we're looking in the x, nope, in the yz plane, then we have x is equal to 0. So our line right here, our line right there is the line when x is equal to 0. That's z plus y is equal to 2. Our line underneath, you'll remember, was the line y is equal to z. And so where do these guys meet? Well, if y is equal to z, we can plug that in to the first equation and we get 2y is equal to 2 or y is equal to 1. So we know this point right here where they meet is the point where y is equal to 1. If we do the exact same thing on the other side, well this equation here that was our plane x plus y plus z is equal to 2, but now we're where y is equal to 0. So we get 
that that is z plus x is equal to 2. The equation below, the equation below was x is equal to z. And so in that plane, we do the exact same calculation and we find that this is 1. So our region D, if we were to plot it flat, is just the triangle that goes from 1 to 1 in the xy plane. So there's our region D. And so that's x and that's y. And so that's the line y is equal to 1 minus x. And if we set up that region as a type 1 region, we have 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1, and 0 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 1 minus x. Now we want to find the volume of that solid, which means that we are going to do the top bound, which is the plane in red, minus the bottom bound. So our plane in red, if we solve for it, z is equal to f of xy is going to be 2 minus x minus y. And our plane in blue, which is the bottom bound, is going to be, so I guess we had called this f2, let's call the other one f1, so z is equal to f1 of xy, and that's this, pl this plane where we isolate z, so we're going to get z is equal to x plus y. And so the volume of s is the double integral over d of f2, the top bound, minus the bottom bound dA. I have all of those pieces now, so I can go ahead and set up that integral and evaluate it. So we've got the integral from 0 to 1, of the integral from 0 to 1 minus x of the top function is 2 minus x minus y minus the bottom function surface which is x plus y and this is set up in the order of dy dx. Let's clean that up and evaluate. So the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 minus x of so we're going to get 2 minus 2x minus 2y dy dx. We could factor out a 2 or we could just leave them in place. So let's do that uh, resistance being too great in my mind to factor out at this point. So let's uh, anti-differentiate, which means we're going to get 2y minus 2xy minus y squared, and that needs to go from 0 to 1 minus x, that is going to be dx. So filling that in, we've got the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 times 1 minus x minus 2x times 1 minus x minus 1 minus x all squared dx. So a little bit of algebra and cleanup here, so let's factor out, why don't we? So if I factor out a 1 minus x, I'm going to be left with 2 minus 2x minus 1 minus x. So 1 minus x times 2 minus 1 will give me 1 uh, minus 2x minus minus plus x, 1 minus x, so 1 minus x squared, which is x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I've got the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 2x plus 1 dx, which now super easy, we can do 1 third x cubed minus x squared plus x from 0 to 1, which gives us 1 third minus uh, 1 plus 1, oh that's nice, minus 0, and so we get 1 third cubic units as the volume of S.